So, we have found the area below a curve, or the area between a curve and the x-axis. But now we want to look at how to find the area between two curves. Okay, and actually I'm going to use this to also explain why area underneath the x-axis is just negative. Okay, but you notice here, if it says to find the area between the two curves, and if it does not give you an interval, then they, then they intend for you to find intersection points. Okay? Just like if we were finding the area above the x-axis, we had to find the x-intercepts, and that was the interval. Here, if we are looking for the area between these two curves, we need to find the intersection of these two curves. So you may have to solve a system of equations. Okay? But we've got these values of A and B, and that's what we're going to be finding the integral from. Um, as we'll see, there can be more than just two intersection points, and then we have to work with those, okay? But the other thing that you need to do is not only figure out what the intersections are, but secondly, determine which function is greater in the interval. In other words, which function is on top, all right? So here we have this function, and under here we have this function, okay? So you'll notice f of x is this one that's going, um, that is on top. So that is going to be greater than the g of x on the interval. It doesn't matter the rest of the whole graph. All we care about is right here between a and b. That's literally which one's on top. Yeah. That's going to be the one that is greater. Okay? So if I'm trying to find the area between, those are the first two things I've got to do. Okay? So now, once I know which one's on top, I'm going to integrate the difference of the functions. Now, look at, look at what we're doing here. If I do the integral of f of x from a to b, Okay, if I do the integral of f of x from a to b, which is this part right here, okay, you'll notice it goes from a to b all the way up to f of x. Is this one just finding the difference? We are going to end up finding the difference, okay? But notice what, what we're doing when we're finding the integral of f of x from a to b. We're getting this whole shaded region that I gave you all the way down to the x-axis, okay? Which obviously is more than what we want. We don't want that stuff on the bottom, okay? But that is why we then subtract the integral from a to b of g of x, okay? Because look, the integral from a to b of g of x is this extra stuff down here that we don't want. Okay? So by subtracting that integral, this one right here, we are then getting rid of the part of the area that's extra that we don't need. And that leaves us with just the area that we're looking for, which is between the two curves. Okay? Now, if you think about it, this is just like that f of b minus f of a. Remember, f of b gave us the area from b all the way back to the y-axis, and f of a gave us the area from a back to the y-axis, so we subtracted to get rid of the extra. Here, it's kind of the same idea, just vertically. Okay, the integral of f of x gives us from here all the way down to the x-axis. The integral of g of x, the bottom function, gives us the area that we don't want, so we subtract it, leaving us with the part that we do want. Okay? Now, just as an example, here we have 
the graph y equals x plus 2 and y equals x squared plus x minus 2. We have this line in the parabola, and it says find the area of the region enclosed by those two graphs. So enclosed by means we're going to go ahead and find the intersection points first, and then we'll set up our integral, okay? So first of all, intersections. That's what it looks like. How would we find it? Set up a system of equations, okay? And since they're both equal to y, we can set them equal to each other, right? So we would set x plus 2 equal to x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so yeah, on the graph it looks like it's at negative 2 and 2, but how would we find that? We set the two equations equal to each other, and now it's a quadratic, so we subtract the x and subtract the 2, and we have 0 equals x squared minus 4, and then we do see, okay, that means x squared equals 4, so x is plus or minus 2. So I know now that I'm going to be taking the integral from negative 2 to 2. Okay? Now, again, we know we can see this one, so we can see that the line is above the other one, right? But, in case it was a graph that we couldn't see, we didn't know how to sketch it or didn't have the time to sketch it, it's not too hard to figure out which one is on top, okay? All right? Which is on the top? The one with the positive y intercept. Okay. Yeah, pick any number in the interval. Pick a number. Zero. Yeah, we like zero. Pick a number in the interval from negative 2 to 2, okay? So we're going to let x equals 0, all right? So on y equals x plus 2, we have y equals 0 plus 2 is 2, or y equals 0 squared plus 0 minus 2, which is negative 2, okay? Since 2 is greater than negative 2, this one is the one that's on top. So now, since we know that the line is the one that's on top, when I go to do my integral, I put the line first, x plus 2, minus the parabola that was on the bottom. And of course, I would simplify before I ever, uh, before I ever did the antiderivative, okay? So we have the integral from negative two to two of a negative x squared, x minus x is zero, two minus a negative two is two plus two, which is four. And now, I can go ahead and integrate, okay? So, we're doing the integral of the top minus the bottom. Well, no, by top and bottom here, we mean the top function is the line on this interval, and the bottom function was the parabola. So I did the line minus the parabola. Okay? So we have a negative x cubed over 3 plus a 4x. There's our integral and I evaluate that from negative 2 to 2. 
okay? So first I plug in a positive 2, so it's negative 2 cubed over 3 plus 4 times 2 minus a negative, we evaluate it at negative 2, negative 2 cubed over 3 plus 4 times a negative 2. Okay? And then you're just simplifying. Negative 8 thirds plus 8 minus, that's a positive 8 thirds minus 8. So, negative 8 thirds minus 8 thirds is a negative 16 thirds. 8 minus a negative 8 is 8 plus 8, or 16, okay? So negative 16 thirds is negative 5 and 1 third. If I add 16 to that, that means I have 10 and 2 thirds. And that's the exact area of this region right here. Okay? So this isn't terribly difficult, it's just got a couple of steps that you got to go through, okay? Yes? Yeah. Now, um, here's one, and this is where I said earlier that I'll explain to you why area underneath the x-axis is actually negative, okay? Here, this is a problem that I could have given you with our previous lesson. Find the area of the regions contained by the function and the x-axis. And I already told you what you need to do back then. You, you had to find the zeros, right? You had to find the zeros to determine your intervals, okay? And, uh, and then anything, since we're finding total area, we would then um, take the absolute value of each of those regions, okay? Now, if I were to find the zeros of this, okay, I'd factor out an x, and I'd have an x squared plus 2x minus 3, and then I'd factor that into an x plus 3 and an x minus 1. And I would get zeros at x equals 0, negative 3, and 1. But notice what we're doing here. Another way of thinking about this is we actually have two functions. We have this function, y equals 0, right? So I could think of this as being the area between x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x and the function y equals 0. So here's where I was finding the intersection points, right? And then this, this one presents us with a little bit of a different situation. If I want area between, I've got to figure out which one is on top in the interval. Well, here, because there were three intersection points, I have two different intervals. If I put these in order, okay, I'm going to have the interval from negative 3 to 0, and I'm going to have the interval from 0 to 1. So I need to figure out which function is on top in each of those. Okay? So, eventually what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be taking the integral from negative 3 to 0, and we're also going to be taking the integral from 0 to 1. Okay, and we're going to add those together. 
Now, before when we did something like that and we were looking for total area, we said, hey, just take the whichever one ends up being negative and make it positive. Do the absolute value. Okay? This is another way of thinking of that. If I determine, hey, between negative 3 and 0, let's say I plug in a negative 1 into this, I get negative 1 plus 2 plus 3. Well, that's going to be positive. So I know that this is greater than the y equals 0 on that interval. Okay? So, f of x is on top in this interval. If I were to plug in a fraction, like 1 half, I'd have 1 eighth plus one-fourth of two, which would be a half, so that's now five-eighths, minus one-and-a-half. Five-eighths minus one-and-a-half is a negative, okay? So I now know that on this interval, y equals zero is on top, okay? So look at how I would set up my integrals. My integrals... I'd have this x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x minus the 0. Okay. I need to fit a dx in there. From 0 to 1, the top function is 0, and I would be subtracting the x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. You see that? And notice how we accomplished the same thing that we were looking at before, where, okay, if this part is negative, we just double the negative where we subtract that to make it positive, right? Well, here, by doing 0 as the upper function minus the cubic, that will end up making that total area positive, okay? But, guys, this right here is why any area that of a region that goes below the curve is, a, is negative, okay? And then we do 0 minus that to get... Um, to make it positive and actually find the total area, okay? So, now we can work through this. We have x to the fourth over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2, and we're evaluating that from negative 3 to 0. But then we're going to add to that a negative x to the fourth over 4 minus 2x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay? One nice thing is when you plug in 0 to either one of these, the whole thing is 0. Okay? So now we just have 0 minus, we plug in the negative 3, and we get a positive 81 fourths minus 18 minus uh, 27 halves. Okay? And then over here, we're going to have a negative... 1 fourth minus 2 thirds plus 3 halves minus 0. Okay? And then it's just a little bit of algebra to figure all that stuff out. Okay? So we've got this first. Negative 82 fourths is a negative 20 and one half plus 18 
minus 2 thirds plus 15. So I've got 33 minus 20 and a half, so that's going to be 12 and a half minus 2 thirds. Uh, let's see, that's 12 and 3 sixths minus 4 sixths, that's going to be 11 and 5 sixths will be our total area. Okay? No, that's the whole thing.